Woo! Hey, we are live. Yo. Hello, everyone. Good morning. I can Hi there. there. Yeah, good morning for those of us on Eastern Time Zone and east of Eastern Time Zone. Thanks, everyone, for joining us this evening. Really appreciate the time and obviously Hi. the dedication to the cause. Um, first and foremost, let's do a quick uh, introduction of our players. We'll get to character introductions in a bit, but we'll start with player introductions. Uh, let's start with the left on my screen, which is Rick. Hi, I am Ricky Rick. I am at Behome Mas and on Twitter, um, and I am here. Sweet, Puddins. <laughs> uh, hi, I'm uh, Mr. Puddins. I go by that on Twitter. Uh, I make sick D and D memes and stream games sometimes. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I really thought you were going to say sick D and D memes and sick beats. Oh, uh, I wish. <laughs> <laughs> Maddie. Uh, hey folks, I'm Maddie, aka So Matty Games, and yeah, uh, I'm so happy to be here. Yay. Sweet. And Rich. I am Rich Parler at Disruptive DM on Twitter. Um, I do lots of things, but mostly <laughs> Legendary Realms Terrain as a part owner, designer, and uh, all around fun 3D terrain stuff. Cool, cool. And I am your DM for this evening at PB Smitty on Twitter. Feel free to give me a follow. But most importantly, feel free to break out your wallets and give some money to Flint, because that is why we are here this evening, for raising money for one drop for Flint. Uh, as most people know, Flint's been battling uh, contaminated water since way back in 2014, a problem that is still not solved. So we are hoping to get some money uh, to them today, uh, really to get filters for folks in Flint so they can have clean water uh, and go about their lives um, as they should, because frankly, it's a kind of crappy problem that really should have been addressed a long time ago. Um, getting into the game, we are running a super exciting space game today where our crew members uh, will be battling all sorts of inanity and uh, hopefully coming out on top of it. Um, but before we get into that, I'm going to talk a little bit about the system we're using, which is a simplified D6 system. Effectively, uh, the players will be rolling 2D6 for most checks, um, with a uh, typical 7 being uh, the DC for success. Uh, if there's something that's harder, more difficult, I'll let them know. Uh, maybe it's a 9 for a particularly skilled type thing. Um, but if they have a specific profession or tool or something like that, which allows them um, a little bit of advantage in uh, accomplishing that task, they will then roll with advantage. 3d6, take the highest two. Simple as that. Um, uh, in terms of combat, everyone's going to roll 2d6 for initiative. Uh, attacks are rolled as 2d6, uh, except for someone who might have a professional advantage. Um, each hit removes one HP, so you're not rolling for damage. Um, and at zero HP, you are incapacitated. After three consecutive rounds at zero HP, you will die. Multi character, not you. Uh, <laughs> anyone oh, can attack. So we don't have to put on those. High stakes games. Yeah, high stakes games. Put on those electric shock uh, suits. Like a sword art online. If you die in the game. <laughs> uh, anyone can attempt to heal someone else for one HP. They must roll a seven or better on that piece, unless you are rolling with advantage for your profession. That is literally the entire system. Um, and it's backed up and bolstered by all of us just playing rule of cool and running with it. So um, that's it. Is everyone ready to get going? I am ready to get going. Yes. As, as ready as I'll ever be. Yeah, so let's do it. Some ships. You are all crew members aboard the Promise. Uh, you've been unloading your cargo throughout the day, and now the crew is gathered in the ship's mess, relaxing and chatting, as is your dish tradition after a successful job. Your employer, ship owner, and captain, Carl Eudel, is on his way back uh, from meeting with a potential new client. Normally, they would take their dealmaker, uh, Lorenz, or their muscle, RFS-81, with them. But uh, the Valandrin species don't really like humans, and the android was needed to interface with robotic loading docks to unload heavy cargo more quickly. So they went themselves. While that's not the usual protocol, none of you were too worried. Captain Eudel is a Talinum one of the oldest and most respected species in the known universe. They were the first of the known species to develop interstellar flight, welcoming the Feldoran and Valandrian races club sometime later, with the rest of the known species following in time. 
As an ageless species that rarely reproduces, the Tolinum have come to be greatly outnumbered by the other species in the hundreds of years since humanity, the last known species, joined the community. Given how few Tolinum there are, it is rare that you would meet more than a handful in your lifetime. Unlike other species, they don't seem to share much interest in expansion. And even after all this time uh, from first contact with the Feldorans, the location and composition of the Tolinum homeworld remains unknown. But the five of you have been lucky enough to work with one of them, albeit one who is a self-described uh, eccentric. Uh, Carl Eudel prides themselves on treating crew like family and after each job, likes the crew to gather in the mess as you're currently doing for a toast and, a sh uh, and to share praises for a job well done with good natured jokes for jobs that weren't quite as well done. As the five of you wait in the mess, uh, feel free to describe your characters to one another and all the folks watching. Okay. You see roll in a liquid blob of blue book. She kind of like rolls up to wherever we get our food and absorbs some into her liquid mass of a body and rolls over to uh, a nearby table and just kind of <sighs> spreads out in as much of a way that a liquid being could while still being cohesed. Is that a word? It is now. Yes, it is now. It's part of your, uh, your uh, species language, cohesed. Yes, just, cohesed. I'm telling you, we should just take that large bowl over there and make that your seat. <laughs> Flotsam is okay with it. My name is Flotsam. I am Squealia, liquid being. So that's me. Who do I see? Um, you see a metallic uh, bronze colored ro uh, humanoid shaped robot. Uh, the arms are a little too long for the robo body. And uh, <laughs> there's two just goggly green eyes on the face. And uh, like instead of a mouth, he has just, like a speaker box <laughs> at, his, at his face. And he's kind of just looking at the, uh, he's kind of looking at this buffet and just, I do not require sustenance. RFS 81 shall move forward. <laughs> when RFS 81 is powered off, we often draw a mouth on his speaker. Yes, and a mustache. <laughs> we think it is hilarious. <laughs> it's very Richard, uh, uh, give, me a, give me a D6 roll and we'll see if uh, you recently have drawn one on his, his speaker. Four, four. Uh, that that works. You've got a you've got a, a mouth on your speaker right now. All right, I probably look really goofy right now since I have like I'm picturing like big kissy lips drawn on. <laughs> <laughs> Captain uh, Captain Oidel likes to refer to RFS as Rufus. Uh, he thinks it's funny. Ah, awesome. I uh, uh, I am a human. I am the uh, the pilot of the promise, um, which is ironic since humans are not the most trusted in the universe. <laughs> hey, we do what we can. Uh, pretty much, I'm generally nondescript. I like to fade into the background. Shortish hair, uh, blue eyes is about the only distinguishing f outward the outwardly distinguishing feature, and. I dress in whatever style happens to be the trend at the moment because I'm a poser that way. <laughs> I, I've, adop I've adopted um, an alien space penguin yeah. who, who talks and wanders around the ship. Hi. His name is Eli. I, 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 I don't know how I feel about this penguin mm, but I will mm, I will try to work with this mm, mm. hi I am Dr. Oppen Atom and I um I'm the scientist here I am also human I don't always talk human but Humans are a varied species, so 
I may be normal. I don't know. Hmm. Doc, you're as normal as they come. Thank you. Thank you very Most much. Thing, Doc is normal. I like this my, <laughs> my sensors indicate that the doctor is, in fact, quite normal. I mean, not normal for Esquilia, but still a normal for a normal whatever normal is. Who says anything is normal? Well, uh, <laughs> actually, um, there's scientific research into what normal is, and... That's uh, great. Put it in a book. Oh, 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 it is in a book. I could get it for you. I have it in my sure. quarters. All right. The, uh, the fifth crew member, other than the captain, uh, Lorenz, uh, is the sort of fixer, smuggler, uh, underhand dealer of the crew, uh, and is currently absent uh, for reasons that may or may not become clear later. Uh, <laughs> oh no, maybe he got in trouble. It's trying to ask for another doctor. Flotsam help. Hmm. Hmm. Oh yeah, Flotsam is the, uh, the medic slash liquid shaman of the crew. And RFS, in space, <laughs> RFS is the muscle and probably has a compo like a secret compartment where like a gun pops out. <laughs> in space, in I'm the getaway space. driver. In space. The, um, the Squelia are a very uh, religious species, uh, and uh, most of what they do, even even their clearly technological assets that they have, they believe are are based uh, in a, a very religious setting. So even their engineers. Their pilots, their soldiers, everyone is a, a shaman of some sort. Uh, so, Flotsam, what? How do you think? Uh, do, you, do you think heavy metal music is uh, evil? Is it a heavy case? metal music evil? It depends. Are you trying to grow plants or heal brain? Um, either. Oh, that's not going to heal a brain. No. Exactly what I was thinking. Uh, it's not best for healing brain, but not evil. Mm. There are some uh, there are some squelia that actually have um, played around with becoming non-Newtonian fluids, so that when music is played, Ooh. they become soft for a little bit. Uh, Ooh, amazing! Lots of loves hanging with those folk. They cool. I would like to see that. <laughs> they pretty awesome. Wow, a whole person doing that! Oh my goodness! Well, person. And, uh, and waiting for the, the captain to come back, you hear um, quite a bit of commotion off the ship um, with your, your back hangar door open, oh, shouting uh, what, what sounds like maybe a, a, a weapon fired. Um, and the captain uh, comes bolting onto the ship, visibly shaken, uh, perhaps even injured uh, as they rush aboard. The curious thing about the Talinum is that each individual is a sentient collection of trillions of moats. Uh, they can each move independently, condense or scatter, don't need to breathe, and a hundred other self-sustaining things. Because of this, it's widely thought that the Talinum can't die, and certainly not, the hand, not at the hands of another uh, individual. Um, it's generally accepted by all species that there's no weapon that can hurt Talinum. And yet, in front of you, the captain stumbles to the ground, uh, visibly hurt, uh, perhaps even dying. Uh, the captain screams in a thousand discordant voices, get us out of here, before convulsing violently. I run up to the uh, I run up to the controls and start I run up to the captain. Get us out here! All right, give me a, a. Oh, go ahead. Give me a uh, piloting roll. Uh, I close get... the door. All right. I <laughs> <laughs> see. The door. Uh, give me a perception roll as you as you close the hangar door, Doctor. Okay. Uh, Garrett, give me a piloting roll. Uh, Flotsam, give me a. Uh, is that a, is that an advantage? You are the pilot. Just, um, just making sure. As the captain comes running in and sounds of gunfire, a slot on my leg opens up, RoboCop style, and a big Auto 44 <laughs> is like, it, like just put into my hand, and I'm like Charlie's angel by the door. Okay, so you, <laughs> uh, you and the doc run to the the hangar door. All right, everybody, tell me what they got. I got a seven. Uh, do I haven't rolled yet? Do I roll with advantage because I'm yep. a medic? You got it. Okay. That was loud. Ten. Okay. Well, you know, you are the liquid, so you should be louder than all of us. You're... Um. <gasps> so, do I roll one or two dice? You roll two dice. 
Okay, I got three. You got a two and a four. Okay. I got so, a one and a two. So yeah. So uh, so looking at the uh, the it's it's chaos out there. People are scattering. I am uh, very frightened. Very I am, frightened. I I don't know how to work okay. a door anymore. I believe you was a breathe. Um, but 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 no, but, that's not breathing. I have experience with this. Not breathing. Are we clear to go? So the hangar's closing, Rufus. Uh, you're there too, so you give me a perception roll as well. Um, okay, sure. Um, Eleven. Okay. Uh, so you look out, uh, and you very specifically see two Valandrin, uh with weapons in their hands uh, running towards the ship. Ooh. Uh, I need to slow them down. Time to take some pot shots. <laughs> All right. You can roll an attack. Um, so, as Garrett, as you're 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 gunning this thing uh, and you're heading out uh, before the because the, you only roll a seven before the the door is even entirely closed. Um, so it's a little bit of a, uh, a rocky thing, but you're planet side currently on on Lucky Three, so uh, you're not you're not at a space station, so you don't have to worry about uh, any sort of you know lack of air as you start to move. But uh, it is a, a bit fact. of a bumpy ride, Doc. Uh, all right, Flotsam. So you're you're looking at the captain. I am. Uh, and you rolled a ten. Um, yes, I did. So here's the weird thing about what you're you're looking. You've never actually had to examine the captain before because they've always been super healthy so you start examining them and you don't actually know what you're looking for right you, you start to okay. go over the body uh, and the only thing you can think to do is to look for anything that isn't normally there uh you know is there a wound of some sort and so you're, you're looking over the form seems the same everything seems normal and then just kind of out of the corner of your eye it seems like you see a piece of the captain's form has changed randomly um back and forth from moats to other things. Um, it was subtle at first, but as time passes, it becomes more apparent. Parts of colloidal seem to briefly change into other objects. You're sure of it. Um, hmm. At first, one small part of them turned into a cookie before changing back. Mm. Then another part became a picture frame, you think? Cookie. As you watch, it becomes more obvious as various parts of them shift without rhyme or reason through a cascade of objects colors, even sounds. And at one point, what you can only describe as a conceptual feeling, you think? You're pretty sure that part of the captain changed into that feeling you get when you really want to have another helping of dinner, but you know you probably shouldn't, and you think about how to justify it. Now part of him is the smell of a wet dog. This is really weird. Ugh. Ugh. Uh, Wait, did you roll I can't your smell. Rufus? Uh, not yet. Uh, is that with advantage, because I'm the, the shoulder soldier? Um, let's see. A 10. All right. That hits. And so Rufus's eyes will go red, and nice. he's gonna just hold Ring. the gun up, and he's gonna be like exterminate. <laughs> oh my! <laughs> what you have another? Say another hello to Mr. Angry oh, eyes. I, do I get to attack twice because I'm a robot? You do. Super speed. Yes. Does does he give them disadvantage with his disconcerting face? <laughs> <laughs> He's given me disadvantage with the disconcerting face. You see, it works uh, on that, humans. That is another ten, and I'm okay. just and then I just move over to the other one. Just boom, boom. <laughs> so, so you wing you wing the first guy, uh, and he dives behind uh, a barrel, uh, and you hit the the second one as well. And she uh, she gets off a shot before she die she dies behind a barrel. Uh, oh, it's a miss. Um, it goes wide, but. As it comes, because it's coming through now, the closing uh, mm -hmm. back. So it's the last shot that gets through. And you see, it's a weird sort of projectile moving a little bit slowly. It's not as fast as a, a laser or, or, or bolt or anything like that. And it just comes into the ship. And it's sort of like a weird orb of energy. Uh, and it actually hits a light on top of uh, on top of the ship that you're where you're standing. And it turns into uh, a, basically like a pumpkin, a, a gourd fruit that the, it turns into after it gets hit by the... Uh, the thing, and then what? Out of, uh, do I do I see this from any of the ship's sensors as we're leaving? No, you're just you're focused on. It's just be weird. Okay, um, I'm uh, gonna continue checking out the captain and be like, who's closest to me? Is there uh, so you're you're in the cockpit right now with okay. with Garrett. Okay. Um, I 
Flotsam is not familiar with what is going on. Uh, I, uh, Captain, Captain, I'm not sure what to do. How can Flotsam help you? They start to kind of stretch out one cluster of moats towards their cabin, uh, while another moat uh, section starts trying to speak in a much smaller voice than the original uh, voice, and it says, "Get us to Ari Station and and ask ask for." And then the mouth uh, turns into part of a chess set uh, as the hand reaching towards the cabin uh, turns into uh, the back of a chair. Ask the- for what? Ask for what? <laughs> you leave us in the suspense. Um, but as you say that, you actually manage to uh, you know kind. Of Get, get, get the captain. You get uh, get them basically comfortable. You push all their moats together in like a, a form as as like different parts of the moats on the outside um, turn back into moats. You kind of condense them so they're all. Can I like li- cocoon together. him with my liquid body and just kind yeah. of like hold him? <laughs> uh, and you get it so the captain seems stable. They're not. They're breathing. Uh, they're continuously changing, uh, but they're not seemingly in pain anymore at this point. Okay. And, you all are, uh, you've cleared the atmosphere and you're now uh, in uh, space. Did you want to do something before you left the atmosphere, Doc? No, no, no. I um, I had an out of character moment for a second there. So. <laughs> um, but, um, did anybody else see that turn into a pumpkin? Uh, uh, Rufus did. And then it turned back, right? Is that what? Still a pumpkin. No, it's still a pumpkin. Okay. Ooh. <laughs> what do you make of this, Doc? I don't know, but you can make a jack o' lantern. Some kind of, um, like uh, molecular changing. Oh. Maybe that's what's happened to the captain. Oh my. Huh. Who are these people? Who? Wh- wh- what do we know about the people that we were at the p- place? Uh, so you do know that the, the captain was going to see um, uh, somebody from the Valandrin species. Um, that was the primary reason they didn't bring uh, one of the humanoids uh, along with them. Uh, and that is also the the species that you see uh, that Rufus saw uh, as the the ship was fleeing. They basically look humanoid, um, except their uh, knees are inverted and they have an extra joint in their arms. Okay, and I see. So, hmm. Right. Okay. So they have some kind of weird weaponry that is changing the molecular structure of things is that even part of the accords that feels illegal (laughs) i want to scan i will scan the legal database and court records for the local systems are things illegal in space Things are uh, definitely illegal in space. <laughs> Otherwise, it would be right. space anarchy. Space <sighs> anarchy feels good. No. Uh, there, are, there are several uh, rules and regulations uh, detailing the <laughs> use of firearms uh, and other weaponry, both in peacetime and in wartime. Uh, unfortunately, there is no mention of anything like a molecular changing uh, weapon. So it is not. There's no precedent for this type of thing. I was going to say, half the things we do are illegal in space. It's true. You you don't necessarily have a unblemished record in this crew. Hey, hey, the- hey, hey. And we're not talking about us. We're not talking about us. <laughs> All right. This <laughs> unit is not concerned with the legality of its actions. Morality programming is subpar. We, we've turned that off in you. One of the first things Lorenz did uh, when they joined the crew was to remove your uh, your ethics and morality chip and make a few modifications to it. <laughs> they have removed my Asimov core. <laughs> <laughs> you used to be an etiquette and protocol droid, but not anymore. <laughs> um, you heard the, you heard the the captain mention uh, Ari Station. So, uh, I heard. Uh, okay. 
Pilot, I... we must go to Aries Station. What, what do we want with that? We need to talk to someone who is not a chair back, but I must go search Captain's quarters. Uh, okay. Uh, if that's the orders, we'll do that. All right, so course for Aries Station. I set, I set course for Aries Station and uh, the most direct. Yep, give me a piloting roll. We'll see if you can shave off a few uh, non-distance parsecs. Uh, you managed to uh, to do so. Uh, and you're fine. You've got a, you've got a, uh, I made all the lights. Yep. You made all the lights. You hit all the greens, all the green stars. Um, May I interject for just a moment? Mm -hmm. Maddie, you have a donation. Yeah. Yeah. I know. He's working on it. (laughs) Working on it. Oh, so that was the, uh, okay. So (laughs) peanut butter. (laughs) <laughs> um, is that Reese's peanut butter? It is Reese's peanut butter, and you know what? This shit is delicious. I was gonna say that's gotta be good. It's like forty percent sugar, but um, <laughs> it is um, you know, not pizza worthy. So the pizza I have today is, um, of course, as CA would know, I like sausage on my pizza, extra sausage, but I also have pepperoni. Um, so we take the pizza and we oh, no. spread the peanut butter on there, right? You know, get that, <laughs> get that all, oh, no. all over there, right? And, uh, you know, just make sure that we get that in every little nook, you know? <laughs> oh, no. So, see that? Mm, nice. nice and peanut buttery. Oh. <laughs> oh. Interestingly, uh, peanut butter pizza is a delicacy among the Feldorans. <laughs> Something nice that... Oh, that face. Oh, that face. Amongst them. Oh, my God. You could have had breakfast sausage on that pizza. It would have gone better. That better. Oh, my God. <laughs> I, see, I feel like you just gotta go. You just gotta cram it all in there and then get the drink in there. I don't know, but I can't. I'm, <laughs> I can't Smaller physically do it. Slices. <laughs> I know. I know. The body no. won't let me swallow this. No, I'm, I, I'm having, it's peanut butter. It's hard to swallow. It's true. I'm having sympathy. <laughs> <game. laughs> oh, man. I'm just so hungry right now. It's ridiculous, you guys. Well, you want this? <laughs> <laughs> now take another pizza, put jelly on it, and put them together. <laughs> oh, Great, God. great taste. They taste great together. Oh. Mm. <laughs> Poor uh, Maddie. Oh. I'm just laughing that somebody joined, like, jumped into the show right as Maddie is eating peanut butter. <laughs> <laughs> oh, like, I came for our peach. Oh my god! <laughs> what is going on here? The things I do for you, you know. <laughs> hmm. Oh my god! There's so much peanut butter. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> I could have put less on there. Damn. That's your own fault. Yeah. No. Oh. <laughs> no, no. I think there's a rule and a law stating it's got to be a specific amount, and I think you were at it. Oh, oh my god. Mm. <laughs> yeah. All right, almost done here. I think we can carry on. Plotsam, uh, you make your way into the uh, the captain's cabin. Um, rolling and roiling and rolling. Uh, hey, do you leave uh, a trail behind you? That would be leaving like parts of myself behind you. Do you leave parts of yourself behind you when you walk? Actually, I do. Okay. Dead cells. Oh, maybe a little <laughs> bit. <laughs> Only if my maintenance has not been upkept recently. Uh, Flotsam tries her best to make sure that she stays in one sort of semi cohesive sure. group. You, you and not an leave like a trail because right. this is gross. Uh, I was just asking because then my penguin would use it as a belly slide. <laughs> I had a purpose to my question. Okay, no, that's just uh, that's just disrespectful. <laughs> hey, if you leave it behind, huh? <laughs> <laughs> I like the idea of you you carrying the penguin like on a leash and just pulling it on on behind Ooh. you on the. 
Yeah. So, um, you head into the captain's quarters, uh, yes, and you've never been in there before, so it's all new to you. Um, in the uh, in the middle of the cabin is a uh, just a giant, like half. Uh, it's a giant hemisphere hollowed out. Okay. Um, and then around uh, three of the walls are just many, many shelves. And on all the shelves are little sort of trinkets and um, you know, other chachis that you immediately recognize some, uh, some of which are just mementos of different uh, like jobs you've been on, places you've been, et cetera. Um, and then on one of the shelves in the middle of the room, you see a safe, uh, two by two. Okay. Um, I just have to say right now, Maddie just looks yeah. so haunted. <laughs> yeah, that's what I was that is, to. that is cursed pizza right there, okay? <laughs> He's just going like, never again, never again. What is your uh, your drink of choice to wash all that down, Maddie? Um, this is a Glacier Cherry Gatorade. Right. Good choice. <laughs> just, as much as you can, to just burn out all other flavors with it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um... I don't know if this is within my skill set or not, but I'm going to envelop the safe and okay. see if I can work little bits of fluid in through seams or cracks and see if I sure. can see what's in there. Uh, this this will be a very high uh, yes. DC, but you can give me a, a 2d6 roll. Yes, I can. Ooh, that's a six. Hmm. Uh, the safe appears to be hermetically sealed and you can't manage to get your uh, your little squishy bits in anywhere um, looking at it uh, you do see that it is a four uh, four uh, letter code it's an alpha alphabetical code okay uh, of four letters okay uh, four letters I'm going to take it with me back to the rest of the peoples sure so you pull the safe out the wall it goes yep and then Spooch, um, right yep. into you, uh, and you sort of uh, jelly roll it back to the uh, <laughs> jelly roll. <laughs> yep. You can go on Maddie's pizza. <laughs> <laughs> so all of you see uh, see Flotsam come out of his uh, out of the captain's cabin with the safe. On second thought, should have looked around for a clue as to code. But does anyone have idea what code may be? Um, a uh, code. I might yeah. know codes. I know. I know things like that. Or Ooh, what code? Are you, what code are you looking for? There could be a way to calculate this, right? Hmm. Can you calculate words? Yes, you can calculate words. Um, you should calculate your words so that you don't harm others. Harming others is what know. I try not to do. I <laughs> prefer to use firearms to harm others. <laughs> I don't. That's why I only carry around a metal pipe. Metal pipe works in pinch as well. You have my utmost respect, doctor. Metal pipe was the lowest of the character uh, item rolls that we had prior to the session. <laughs> It's good. I can just uh, I can just lemonade is what I can do. You know. So um I don't know. Okay. Um I mean, uh, any, uh, anyone else it's a four four alphabetical code. Four alphabetical four letter alphabetical code. Is there? Can I roll for it? Sure, you can. You can. Uh, tell, give me the flavor of what you're trying to do. Mm. So, as mm, as a scientist, right? I'm thinking that the captain might. Yes. I don't. I don't. I don't <laughs> give, give know. Me eight. I don't know what the captain would think. I don't so, know this man. Give me a... Uh, it's a sort of a... It's scientific. You're, you're basically trying to think about what 
codes um, or, or what somebody, what kind of words someone might use for a code. So it's a bit of cleverness and it's a bit of science. So you get your human and your, your science advantage on it. So just give me a 3d6. Oh, I have guessed if doctor does not figure it out, I remembered something. My memory core is a bit dented. Um, wow. That was three fives. Ooh, that's a, that's a 10. Um, so you don't you don't obviously know the word, but in thinking about it, you would think that most individuals would probably pick something that was like very personal to them, um, perhaps a uh, like a place or a person or something that. Uh, so it's numerical, you said. It's alpha. 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 Oh, try Z Z O R A. Okay, who's Zora? I am not sure, but I read it on the label of repair glue that I had found laying around. <laughs> I am uh, so confused. So does anybody put Zora in? You put it in? Yeah. You, you put it in, you hit enter, and the safe opens up. Whoa! <laughs> How did you Thank know you. that? I found this residue, pulls out a bottle of wood glue, <laughs> found this it told me things. Wait, Many where, things. where did you find that? Uh, in the captain's quarters. I they, they spoke in their sleep about someone named Zora that they loved and missed dearly. And considering that fleshy beings tend to be sentimental, perhaps it would be an easy password to remember and the captain did not always seem very secure for obvious reasons. <laughs> we're, 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 we're not always sentimental. You and know. not always fleshy beings. <laughs> Sometimes liquid beings have feelings too. Well, technically, we are liquid beings too because we're 90% water. I am 100% water, so we know that's that off. Please prevent water from getting near RFS 81 for you will short my circuits. Oh, give us hug. <laughs> no, please back away. I don't think that would be good for either one of you. I, you know, because the uh, conduction electricity thingy would really probably hurt you more than anything. Oh. <laughs> it may tickle. We won't know till we try. <laughs> Oh, 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 no, no. Okay, uh, no try in, right now. Go the hug the pilot instead, please. What? <laughs> hug the pilot? Don't hug the pilot, he's flying the ship. Then I hug I'm, you, you're not worry. flying. We're, oh, sorry. we're about to crash the ship, it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so what's in the safe? What's in the safe? I love that the captain is like convulsively dying and you're just like, let's talk about hugs. This is, this is... <laughs> It's important. It's part of the it's morning important. process. <laughs> uh, so you pull out a few things. You pull out a uh, like a sealed plastic bag uh, with the title Insta Safety on it, uh, and you see it's like contents listed uh, there. And inside there are uh, a pair of adjustable mag boots and a uh, instantly encompassing pocket vac suit. Uh, and then behind that, you see two pistols uh, inside um, that are uh, three setting pistols. One is a psychic setting, one is an electromagnetic setting, uh, one is a laser setting. Cool. Um, pulling those out, they're both on, they're sitting on top of uh, two fragments. Um, one is a triple C membership card with star side assistance from the Cosmos Craft Cooperative, uh, still valid. Oh, good. Whew. We have to pull uh, this thing over. Underneath Bad. that is a cocktail napkin with the name Lombardi's on it and an address on Aries Station. Uh, okay. And then finally, behind that, the last thing in the safe is a key to a Grok Grok mini storage on Aries Station. I want to just like. Uh, region and snatch that little key up and just kind of hold it within my liquid persons yep. Yep. for safekeeping. Uh, I think someone else should probably hold a napkin with address. 
Uh, oh, yes, me. yes, I think Go maybe don't touch that because the molecular structure of that paper is not very strong. I am on the same page with you of same page. You should not touch pages either. <laughs> you're, you're, you know, you're studying holding... was really difficult. Ugh. No matter how many times I see it, it's very disconcerting. It's equivalent to me swallowing that key. Yeah. Um, it's kind of like... Just putting it out there. It's just just kind of like hanging and... Except it doesn't come out of us quite as easy. Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> Think of like the ocean in Moana. That's kind of like what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. of you, yeah. So. Oh, anyway. well, then that's mesmerizing. Yeah, it's kind of <laughs> cool. Just... You start to veer the ship to the left as you watch. <laughs> That's right. Oh, geez. Sorry, guys. Sorry. <laughs> uh, looking down uh, at your systems, Garrett. Uh, yes. You're very familiar with the ship. You notice all all systems are green and operational. Uh, and that includes your photon torpedoes, your Gauss cannon, your tractor beam. Uh, I like that one. Impulse engine, jump drive, deflector shields, and transporter bay. Oh, I should probably know how to operate that, huh? <sighs> Somebody donated fifteen dollars to the cause. All right. Nice. Excuse me for one Ooh. second. I need to go grab something because this donation came in for me. Oh, Ooh. it's Maddie's fault, by the way. Ha <laughs> ha! <laughs> More pizza? <laughs> no, but he's got to eat something. <laughs> Yum. Okay. All right. Uh, so while he's doing that, what do you do with the other items? You've got the two guns. Uh, you've got the napkin, which uh, one the of the doctor has to take. The doctor Doct took the napkin. Dr. Atom. Atom. Um, and then I want to have the pilot take the triple C card. Okay. And then, uh, of course, the android take the uh, guns because, hey, guns. All right. With, with pleasure, it, <laughs> it takes a gun, spins it on android finger, tests okay. the weight of it, calibrating to weapon systems. Are you taking both of them or just one of the two guns? Um, I'll take one of them. Okay. A white Kit Kat dipped in mayo and ketchup. Oh, oh that's worse. Uh, I would do the uh, peanut uh, I'd rather do peanut butter pizza. Oh. I mean, we I'm, can give the other gun to I'm someone totally else I'm totally fine case. with that. Like, I, I mean, maybe mind. not the ketchup, but, you know. I can't Honestly, have ketchup, dressing, so. I just. I love uh, mayonnaise. Chocolate. Yeah. Um, love so, yeah, I, gun. you can choose who you want to give that to. Um. Um, Gary, you've got the uh, the Cosmos card. Let's see. Um, I'll give the other gun to either the, either the pilot or the doctor. That seems like a good idea. <laughs> you you Wait, choose. Giving the gun to the pilot seems like a good idea. I'm all for it. Okay. <laughs> Here you go, pilot. In case anyone tries to hijack the ship. <laughs> Thank you. And you said it was a pocket vac suit. Is it small enough to fit the penguin? So, <laughs> arm the penguin. So you open the, the arm. You open the insta safety pack, and it's a, the two mag boots. Um, but basically, the pocket vac suit is it's, it can fit any size, but it goes in your pocket, and it registers when there's decompression, oh. and it really covers you. Uh, Explosive. Got it. Yeah. All right. So I got it. Okay. Um, I think you got to go for a bigger dip this time. I felt like that. Bigger was, dip. That Not was like a dollar worth of. Uh, this is this is the fifteen dollar one right here. There you go. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> That's the. the got an after It's not me. very good. And it's not very pleasant that way. <laughs> Whew. Uh, it's all right. I know who donated, so it'll all come around again. <laughs> we'll get her on one of these charity events next time. So about this time, yeah. uh, the uh, the ship jumps out, drops out of a uh, jump drive, 
uh, and you see uh, Aerie Station uh, in your sights. Awesome. I will initiate um, crashing sequence. All right. Give me <laughs> What? Uh, if if we're crashing, I want to re-envelop the captain if he's still alive, <laughs> and like kind of put him on like a little water mattress. Sure. Mm-hmm. Basically, a water bed for the yes, captain. Yes, yes, that that's what I was. The word. This was ship for. is equipped with landing gear oh. and landing thrusters. Why would you crash it on purpose? How do you know this? Are you rocket scientist? I am. Oh, okay. So, and you would know this. Every landing is actually just a controlled crash. Yeah, yeah. people freak out so much. Oh, 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 oh! You're being, you're being funny. Oh, at your expense. All right, I'm gonna say that that's not a combination that I would do. I, I like. <laughs> Pass on that one. Yeah, you know, I was also. It was no sugar added ketchup. And Ooh. olive oil mayo. Uh, oh, so the worst it wasn't one. sugar on sugar on sugar. Olive oil mayo. God, that's, that's a crime best. against humanity. I, whatever. It's a, it's a crime oh, it's against a humanity. <laughs> uh, no, that one, no, I do not uh, allow that. Yes, you know all what? the puns. Just crash all the, the puns. androids part of the ship. Oh. <laughs> hey, just donate eight hundred dollars. You can end me right now. <laughs> oh my god! Puns will be getting worse as the game goes on, but oh. we're not quite there yet. Okay, put in some. <laughs> oh, oh sorry, I got to hold back. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, what'd you roll? Oh, rolling for landing. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry, I was still getting over the taste. Totally. <laughs> uh, ten. All right, easy peasy. Uh, you pull it right into a, a hangar. Uh, Another successful crash. <laughs> right that into for you, Doc. Clearly marked yellow rectangle. And set down the ship. All right, Eli is going to go back to the mess and clean up whatever we whatever we left behind. Okay. By eating it. Eli. By eating it. Waddles uh, back and I'm forth. Eating. Um, looking forward to, to eating all the food. Um, you do notice that as you land, uh, this ship, such an old ship, uh, one of the indicators flashes uh, orange for a second yep. on your, uh, your Gauss cannon uh, and then comes back to green. Tap uh-huh. it. It's fine. Looks fine. It's been basically been your, uh, your go-to uh, solution for all problems on the ship. It's just tapping them a little bit. <laughs> Eli, let us know if anything goes red or orange. Just hit this communicator button. Button. Eli gives you a nod of more that Eli is acknowledging that you spoke, not so much acknowledging the meaning of your words. <laughs> That's right. Wait, uh, is this your usual like tech support? Yeah, you he don't. Oh, he's got a penguin. Have there been a? Have there been any issues with the ship? You never told me about anything. We're fine. Can one get more reliable than space penguin? Probably. Not. Yes. Space <laughs> hamsters to the next one up, and that's just pff, no. Space penguins. And they cost. They cost more. They're unionized. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Uh, as you you hit the uh, this is like an alternate dimension red door. If I love you, uh, you, you hit the button on the uh, the cargo, the cargo bay, and you see uh, several other ships in the in the hangar in various stages of refueling, loading, and unloading. Most are box haulers, but a couple of uh, a couple of the ships are flex ships like the Promise. Um, you know this, Garrett, um, uh, and I'm sure you've talked about it before with your. Uh, your compatriots, uh, but the flex ships um, is a model. It's a model, actually, a model of a ship called the Parazidine Oxo Serie A. But most folks just refer to it as a flex ship. When it was released, it was touted as completely customizable for peak performance in all types of situations. In reality, it just manages to squeak by in most areas without being able to do any one thing very well. Uh, there was no Series B made. Um, in addition to the uh, the 
things I mentioned before on your, your dashboard, the ship is also outfitted with a mess hall with a raw matter food processor, which all of you make quite a, a good deal of use of. Uh, crew quarters, cargo bay, and uh, a small lab uh, that the, the dock is basically retrofitted onto the ship. The, um, the food processor is mm -hmm. one piece of equipment on the ship that the penguin absolutely knows how to use. Yep. Because the penguin likes smelt. Um, the uh, Lorenz, who is not yet back from whatever mission they're doing right now, uh, is actually, for some very odd reason, a whiz with the food processor uh, and has worked very closely with uh, Eli on uh, how to use it and, and kind of tweaking it for, for peak performance. Uh, basically taught Eli everything they know about, about the food processor. Yeah. All right. Uh, so you step out uh, and um, yeah, you head into the, the space station. Um, what are, what are you heading to first? What, what's your, your goal? Uh, uh, based on the napkin, what style of restaurant was uh, Lombardi's? Um, it looks, you know, uh, to you, it looks like a, you know, kind of an old Italian restaurant. <laughs> That's what our first stop. All right. Uh, so Unless we want to split the party, which is always advisable in my, in, in you know, my line of business. That's not smart. It's perfectly great. It's you not guys smart. <laughs> I we do not recommend <laughs> or we can go eat uh, eating is good <laughs> I could nosh <laughs> I do not require sustenance but I do not recommend splitting up for we require a numerical advantage should as they say shit go south south uh, all shit goes south oh sorry no <laughs> <laughs> Um, See, <laughs> yeah. Would some recommend get kept into proper hospital? Are you um, taking the captain? Are you leaving the captain on the ship? Oh, that's a good I, question. Is there a proper medical facility on the station? So, Airy Station, uh, you've been to a few times. It's kind of seedy. Um, Can we leave? It, we should leave him on the ship. There's Let's definitely some uh, some some bone saws on this, but again, um, I, I think as you're thinking about this, actually, just just give me a, a, a medicine roll uh, with with advantage. Okay. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Seven. You you think about it, and you know you figure any doctor here is going to have the same problem you did, which is no one's ever had to work on a telinum before, um, and on top of that, they're probably not going to care about them as much as you do. Um, so you probably you could probably bet that leaving on the ship would be a better better option. Okay, just like by himself. Well, Eli's there. Okay, uh, Eli, keep eye on penguin. Oh no, you are penguin. Eli, penguin, keep eye on captain. You okay? okay. Uh, if he begins to completely shape shift into chair or chess piece, uh, hit communicator. You okay? If he and take he a goes... picture. Wait, wait, if he switch, if he goes into a chair, I'm gonna sit on him and then press the communicator. Yes. Uh that order Definitely is... sit on him. Yeah. So he doesn't go anywhere. Yes. I guess. Got Security. It. Whatever makes sense for Space Penguin makes sense for uh Flotsam, whatever my name is. <laughs> press so with the that... red communicator button. Just press it. I got it. With your, you may want uh, to say something too. With spot, your ship spot. in the capable, capable wings of your space penguin, uh, you you close the cargo door and, and head out into uh, into the station. Um, the corridors are you know they're tight. Uh, you are on a space station, uh, so you know you have to walk basically two by two. Um, and um, going through, you see uh, you know there's a multitude of different species, uh, different uh, types of stalls and stuff. Um, most creatures are, are walking or ambling or jelly rolling along. Um, there's a few that are using, uh, you know, mechanic, mechanized modes of transport. Um, you actually see a couple uh, kind of rolling along in giant fish bowls that you, you envy flotsam um, as they go past. Uh, and then in addition to all the different species, you see a number of different, uh, different stores as well. Um, you pass a plugs, hugs, and drugs, all your needs for android and organic mental, physical, and emotional health. Uh, on your left side as you go by. Uh, you pass a Walmart 
uh, which is uh, selling, uh, you see up front it has of the shop windows displaying a collection of prefab ship interiors. Holographic signs proclaim, don't settle for a ship with a layout you don't want. Come to Walmart for the latest interior barriers. We've got small oh, walls, no. glass walls, horse walls, containment walls, and pretty walls. Walmart for all your wall needs. Ah, then, I like walls. You, you pass by a number of uh, food stalls. There's uh, one that's advertising itself boldly and brightly as a, a, a meditarian shop. Um, and looking in, you see an alien that looks quite similar to a giant head of broccoli. Uh, eating some kebab. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and uh, the last one you see on this level as you're walking by is a Grok Grok mini storage. Um, and it says, when you think storage, think Grok Grok. Um, I am thinking Grok Grok. That's the thing. That's the place, right? It's this thing and place. Grok Grok. Grok Grok. Or however you pronounce I think it's with a G. This a G. A G. Where everything proverbially goes south. Krog? <laughs> Krog. Krog? Krog. I don't think it matters much, but Krog. is okay. Uh, stop making bird sounds. Krog. It Krog. is Krog. Eli's job. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I I want to uh, squelch into the Grok Grok storage facility. Sure. You go through the door and there's a little ding -ding 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 as you, you move in. Uh, do the the rest of you follow? Right. Follow, yes. please. Yes. yes. Um, you squelch in and there's just rows upon rows of uh, you know small, medium, large lockers up and down this place. Uh, behind the, the counter is a large Dermac uh, sentient you know, pile of rocks uh, that is slowly moving around, kind of doing some paperwork behind the the counter. <laughs> Welcome we to our... rock, rock storage. Hmm. We should put our best face forward. Doc, you want to talk to this guy? How <laughs> I, uh, I have key. You have box. Uh, perhaps we do something together. I did not there mean for it to sound like that. Boxes. <laughs> Uh, what I produce type the key. of key do you have? Put the key on the counter. Okay. <laughs> With this little wave hand. It just kind of recedes. He reaches down with big rock hands and picks up the key. Medium locker. Phil <laughs> is overdue on this locker. Of course it is. Typical. Do you have payment? For a locker. Uh, what is payment? One hundred orbit coins. Well, Squillia don't generally carry pockets. Uh, that's a, like a fair bit of money, uh, and you, none of you have it on you right now. Um, I don't have it with me. <laughs> Do you know what is in locker? <sighs> No, that's why we're here. That's why we here. Hmm. Tell you what. I not have bath in long time. Oh, oh no. My. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> um, mm, I think that might be inappropriate. The, the doc does sponge baths. He's great. Is is that rude? I don't know your custom. Uh, it depends. Are we talking just the 100 coin or a little more, maybe? You, you want me to pay you for... That feels even more dirty. <laughs> <laughs> I mean... I, I think we might be crossing a line here. I don't know. <laughs> Um, how, how about, about uh, he turns the, the uh, he turns to the android and says, "I have not been happy with my like my rock handles. Are you able to shave some of them off?" I I look at the gun <laughs> and I look at the rock handles. Uh, RFS eighty one has not been programmed to do said action. 
but I may very, make attempt. <laughs> it's a very vain rock creature. If you do a good job, I wipe debt. Ooh. RFS-81 shall make attempt to wipe debt. The Dermak gets up and holds its arms up in front of you. And give me a, uh, two, two uh, fire rolls, one for each handle. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, gosh. That's a six. Oh, God. That, that's what I meant. Yeah. <laughs> oh, no. And the second one's a seven. Oh. Yeah. So you get you get the you get the one on the left side good and it looks nice and good, but you kinda indent the one on the right side a little bit. It's the style, it looks great. He looks he's like oh, he's like he you kinda see like his his demeanor fall a little bit. Uh, and he goes, I would have preferred you erred on the other side and left some. It's hard to get back, but uh I look better, I guess. Go ahead. Uh, You're I'll so the, trim now. Oh my I'll goodness. I'll use the wood glue. I'll use rock. the wood glue to repair the rock I trimmed too much. Right. Rock filler and changes <laughs> color, changes the time. <laughs> on the rock, you slap the, another piece of rock on it, and it like immediately slides off from the wood. <laughs> what about clay? We got any please, clay? Please stop. <laughs> Cause, 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 cause we just carry clay around. No, Listen, it's space. You're a doctor. You I don't these. I mean, don't you know how to fix them too? I, I, I'm not that kind of doctor. I'm not a doctor, doctor like a, like a, a medical doctor. I'm a doctor, doctor. I studied a lot, doctor. Oh, oh, oh. I just saw that. <clears throat> which means you just realize you know nothing. I know everything about except one topic, except medicine. <laughs> so the the doctor, rock doctor doctor, doctor doctor. He's doing that thing where, like, you know, you watch it, like you watch a conversation, like you're at Wimbledon or something. Yeah. Except <laughs> that it's far too slow to keep up with the conversation that's going back and forth. <sighs> and then he eventually just gives up, and he's like. Oh. <laughs> This this was a terrible idea. Please go to your locker. After we after we pass by, I put my arm around the dock and say, see, our banter pays off sometimes. <laughs> You're very skinny. <laughs> Eli would be proud of you. Who? Right. I don't know what's happening. Um... 